Well, the question was, if Iran were to launch a nuclear attack on mm -hmm. Israel, what would our response be? And I want the Iranians to know that if I'm the president, we will attack Iran. We would be able to totally obliterate them. That's a terrible thing to say. But those people who run Iran need to understand that, because that perhaps will deter them from doing something that would be reckless, foolish, and tragic. Continuing our conversation with end of, uh, on the end of days, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, geez. Um, but this is really something you should listen to. Uh, author Joel Rosenberg um, grounds his stuff in reality that is um, important and accurate. And that statement, uh, Joel, we talked earlier this week, um, that statement by Hillary Clinton is, it shows and demonstrates what so many people don't understand. Ahmadinejad, correct me if I'm wrong, and the leadership, not the people, but the leadership of Iran would almost welcome us to vaporize all of Iran because it would fulfill their end times prophecy that the great Satan known as us just slaughters Muslims wholesale. Right and vice versa. The the, the uh, Ahmadinejad is, is is not a Soviet or Chinese leader who is a megalomaniac, maniacal dictator, uh, but who wants to preserve his own skin because he doesn't believe in an afterlife. Right. No, Ahmadinejad is a Shiite Islamic fascist. He is a Shiite Islamic fanatic, and what he believes is that the you have that is his mission to create the conditions of global carnage and chaos, and into that. Uh, that mass annihilation of Jews and Christians will come the Islamic Messiah known as the Mahdi. So when somebody says, look, if you nuke Israel, we'll nuke you back, first of all, he thinks, good, that would create the conditions right. in which the Messiah would come. I also believe he believes that he was just chosen. Uh, you know, If he dies, he's going to spend eternity mm -hmm. with 72 virgins, he mm -hmm. believes, and if, he doesn't think he's going to die. He thinks he's going to live because he thinks history is with him, that the wind is at his back, and that's what makes him dangerous. That's what makes him undeterrable. How do you deter someone who believes it's his God-given mission to annihilate the United States and Israel and Judeo-Christian civilization as well, we know it? That's not like the, the Soviet era. Right. The Twelvers, and I, oh man, I, my, my head hurt. I, I did like a year's worth of research on all of this stuff to try to understand their theology. He's a Twelver, yes, he um, which means that he believes in the, twelfth, the coming of the Twelfth Imam. These people were so dangerous, correct me if I'm wrong, that the Ayatollah Khomeini said, kill all the Twelvers, get them out. I don't want them in government, I don't want them anywhere. And they went underground for a while. Yeah, they were, it, was, it was a cult. Yeah. And it was banned because, Ahmed, or because uh, Khomeini's belief was you create uh, uh, paradise on earth. Right. Ahmadinejad and the Twelvers believe, no, no, you create chaos on earth and then paradise comes so from the if sky. I, if I may I explain this again in Christian terms, what, that is, what this is, is we've all read about the tribulation. If you're a Christian, you've read about the tribulation. A Twelvers perspective is, um, well, Jesus comes at the end of the tribulation and it's only seven years, so let's create the tribulation period. Let's get it going so seven years later, Jesus is here. Right. Right? Right. Whereas Christians know it's going to happen, but you certainly don't, <laughs> you don't want, want to encourage it. Yeah. It's the worst case scenario. Jesus, if you're watching, you can wait. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Right. Well, well that's right. And, that, and that's, what, that's what Senator Clinton misunderstands. She fundamentally misunderstands the nature of this particular regime, because it's unlike any other regime in Iran's history. It's unlike any regime in all of history in any country. We've never seen this before. Okay. Um, I know you have done briefings with the CIA, you've been with the Pentagon, you've done briefings at the White House, you've done briefings on all levels. I mean, I've, I've talked to Benjamin Netanyahu about you, um, and he has told me that he understands what we're facing. He has told me. He does. Um, yeah, he, he gets it. He um, Bush gets it. Um, I have not spoken to the president. I, I, I have, I have had uh, uh, sessions with him where I've gathered the impression that he understands the role of religion here uh, and the times that we're living in. Ronald Reagan was one of those guys. Um, how, what is the percentage of people that are, are controlling this situation, that are uh, involved in this situation, that actually consider this to be something they should be concerned about? Very few people in Washington uh, have even heard of the biblical prophecies about Russia forming an alliance with Iran and Libya, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecies, much less any of the other Bible prophecies that you and I have been discussing all week. Uh, and I, I, I make it clear when I get invited to speak at the Pentagon or the White House or Congress, 
I'm not there to persuade them of something. Sure. I really think it's important that I, who was a political guy, am not there as a lobbyist. Hey, you should believe that these are the end of days and here's what's going to happen and here's what you should do. I really don't do that. Right. I just want them to be educated and be aware of as a backdrop. And they're inviting me in. I mean, I have not gone knocking on the door sure. at the Pentagon or the members of Congress, right. but there's a growing interest. Why? Because everyone in Washington is beginning to realize that they don't really understand what's happening in the Middle East. Events are, are, are accelerating in a way that nobody expected them to go. Condi Rice said about a year ago, and it, it made me break out in cold sweat when I first heard her say it. She said, what we're seeing now are birth pangs right. in the Middle East. That is specific language. Do you think she meant to explain what that language well, is implying? Jesus where it's was asked, Jesus was asked uh, on the Mount of Olives by his disciples in Israel, overlooking Jerusalem, when are you coming back and what shall we be watching for? And he gave a list. He could have given a very Washington political answer. Yeah. No comment. Next question. But he gives a list. Wars, rumors of wars, all the things we've been yeah. talking about. But he says the wars and the terrorism, this is all the birth pangs. These are the beginnings of what's coming. Just as a, uh, my wife has had four children, yeah. you know, you can see as you get closer, uh, th they the get contractions closer and get and more get intense and closer together. That's what we're seeing. Now, she is an evangelical Christian. I have no idea if Secretary Rice has an interest in Bible prophecy. I don't know whether she planned to use that language in the context of the Middle East, but boy, it really was evocative of exactly you know, what Jesus said you, would happen. You said, um, you said a minute ago, you know, that you don't, you're not going up the hill and you're trying to campaign for it or anything like that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if we're, nobody knows if we're living in the end times. I, I, I personally, to be real frank with you, I think my kids will be here. I don't know if I will be, but I think my kids will be here. Um, but nobody knows that we've been saying this for thousands of years. I don't want to be the guy who says, I'd much rather, honestly, it'd be much easier for me. And I'd, and, and I'd be, you know, more popular and everything else if I got you on and I made fun of you for an hour. Do you want to be the guy who says, hey, you know, I mean, pay attention. This could be something you should watch. I didn't. I didn't. But, uh, and that's why I began writing novels. I didn't think anyone would take this seriously uh, if I just said, wrote a nonfiction book and said, this is what it is. So I wrote novels. They have started to come true. People have shown interest. Right. They're, That's where I am. They are absolutely phenomenal. The, the latest is Dead Heat by Joel Rosenberg. Grab it. More, more right around the corner. Stick around.